thank you for tuning in to the, uh, today's program, Wisdom for Living. You know, on our last program, we covered several principles or wisdom on how to make 2015 a memorable year. I'd like to be, continue sharing on those principles. We've covered several. Let's cover the remaining uh, seven or eight principles or wisdom on how to make 2015 a all things kind of year. And you know, it's the wisdom of God that changes the season. And so let's begin looking at some of those principles. Number nine, how to make 2015 a memorable, uh, limitless year, a, a year when all things are made new, is to rehearse what God has said. What is it that God has spoken to you? What has God spoken to your heart about? You know, rehearsing what God has spoken, rehearsing what God has spoken through his word, <clears throat> rehearsing what God has spoken to your heart about what his plans and purposes are for you. It's important to rehearse what God has said so that we can drown out all of the, uh, the, the whispers of the enemy to try to tell us that we're not gonna do certain things, that we're not gonna have a great future. <clears throat> so it's important to spend time rehearsing and telling yourself, telling your heart, the things that God has put before you, the things that God has spoken to you. In Isaiah 55, verses six through 11, powerful portion of scripture, uh, the word says, so shall my word be as the rain and the snow comes down and they are fruitful and they reproduce and they cause a harvest to come forward. The word says, so shall my word be. God would tell us this. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. It shall prosper in the things in which I sent it. You know, the words that God's spoken to you will produce in your life. And it's important that we believe that. That what God has spoken will come to pass. And I like, I like the, the, the truth and the reality that God watches over his word to perform it. God watches over the promises and the, and the, and the, and the word that he's spoken into your heart to bring his word to pass. And so in this season, in 2015, as we're early in the year, spend time rehearsing what God has said, not rehearsing what the enemy is trying to tell you. Don't spend time rehearsing the lies of the enemy and finding yourself uh, questioning and doubting what God has promised, but rehearse consistently what God has spoken. Also, number 10 in how to make 2015 a rewarding, fruitful year is to rest in the sovereignty of God. Now, you know, as the Lord spoke this particular word to my heart, it really spoke volumes to me. And to be honest with you, because at times I can find myself anxious and frustrated and, uh, and sometimes a, a little down. And the Lord spoke to me the importance of resting in the sovereignty of God. You know, 2015, as I mentioned, 2014, as I mentioned earlier, had some disappointments. It had a number of close friends or loved ones pass away. And I found myself a little, a little challenged in some areas. And the Lord spoke, first of all, the importance of the word sovereignty. The, the word sovereignty means that God rules and he has the right to rule and he knows everything about everything that I needed to rest in the reality that God knows exactly what he's doing and that nothing in life takes place without God knowing it and having some voice about it. Now, you know, that kind of challenged my theology as I thought about that, you know, that actually God knows and has some voice, some gives his approval either, either knowingly or willingly gives his, his approval because everything is within the scope of God's power. Nothing happens in the universe without God's not knowledge or approval of it because he's all powerful, all knowing and almighty. And so uh, the sovereignty of God is always in place that God has a right to do what God wants to do and what he's approved of. But the word rest speaks volumes to me because from Hebrews four, it tells us that we are to enter his rest, or do we are to labor to find rest in him? Hebrews 4, 10 and 11 says, let us labor to enter his rest. And so one of the things the Lord has been speaking to me and certainly challenging me for the year 2015 is rest 
in the assurance that God is sovereign and that he knows everything and he's, he's overseeing or giving his, his affirmation that, that over everything that happens in life. And again, I'm sure that's going to challenge some people's theology because there's a lot of things happening in life that I know that it's not God's perfect will, but God has, uh, he has either uh, given sanction or approval or he's permitted it to, to occur. But there's rest. Let us cease from our own labors and enter his rest. The assurance that God knows exactly what's happening in our nation, God knows exactly what's happening in the universe and certainly in foreign nations, and he has given assurance that we can find rest in that. And so uh, in 2015, it's gonna be important for us to rest. Per personally, I believe that there will continue to be some horrific, unimaginable things taking place in the world. We have and see the rise of, of uh, Islamic terrorism. We have witnessed and have seen the rise uh, and the continued growth and increase of lawlessness in our own country. And so with those things unfolding, we've got to find a rest in God, knowing that he does all things well and that nothing takes place in the earth without God's knowledge and somewhat approval. So Resting in the sovereignty of God is one of the things the Lord put in my heart. And then number 11, how to make 2015 a memorable new year, a new season. And that is to reflect upon yesterday and learn. Reflect upon yesterday and learn. You know, as I said, as this, this program got started, is that one of my commitments is to pursue wisdom. Proverbs 4 and 7, wisdom is the principal thing. I really have made it my commitment for a number of years to pursue wisdom, to learn, to grow, to get the insight of God. And so when the Lord spoke to my heart about reflecting upon yesterday and learn, I know what he's talking about. He's reminding me to get the wisdom that I need to from yesterday, from 2014, from 2013, and the years that preceded that. It's foolish to keep going in the same direction and making the same mistakes over and over and over again. We should learn from season to season. We should learn from the successes and the failures of yesterday. It's foolish to keep going in that direction when we see it's not working. And so the Lord is reminding me the importance of gaining wisdom and gaining insight from the, from the years that has preceded 2015. Proverbs 12 and 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. I'd like to think that I'm gaining in wisdom. You know, I was reflecting upon uh, this point this morning and I looked at just years and uh, back. I remember I was working with a church in 1996, uh, from 96 to 97. And I look back over those years and I'm thinking, my, 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 I was really foolish in some areas, not in every area, but there were some areas in my life that I look back, I'm like, wow, I really had some challenges. And so what, what, why did I reflect upon that? Because I need to learn from that. I need to learn from, from the failures and certainly learn from the successes. Learn how to keep doing things God's way. Learn how to do things better. Learn from, from those relationships and people that are around us. Learn from, uh, even from your, your children. Learn from every arena. Make it your life quest, as I certainly have, to get the wisdom of God in order to make 2015 and the years that follow that, make them meaning, meaningful, impactful years. Gain wisdom from the years that have gone before us. Gain wisdom and insight from the mistakes that you've made. It, it, come to, to an honest assessment about how life has been, not only just from the, the immediate years, but what did you learn from the, your youth, the mistakes of your youth and the mistakes of your, uh, your, your, your 20s and 30s and so on? For me, all the way up into my 50s, what wisdom do I get from those things? How do I make my future more uh, rewarding and more fruitful? 
by gaining the wisdom that God is trying to show me from those years. In 2015, it's going to be very important that we get the wisdom of God that he's trying to teach us, that we don't keep making the same mistakes and missing the mark in areas that we really should be gaining wisdom from. So, we talk about how to make 2015 uh, a meaningful and powerful season. So reflect upon yesterday and learn. Number 12, relinquishing the seed in 2015. I really believe that 2015 should be and is a year of the seed also, meaning that the seeds planted in the past, we need to speak to those seeds and tell them to come forth and bring a harvest. But also, I believe in 2015, we need to be sowing seed. I really believe that year of the seed, 2015, year of the seed, that we're going to be able to reap in 2015 even as we sow in 2015. I believe that it's going to be important, it is important, not to eat up all of your seed, but sow. Sow your seed. You know, we see in Genesis 26, verses 12 and 13, that Isaac sowed in the land, a land of difficulty. He was, he was talking about a, a, in the Canaan land, the promised land. For whatever reason, there was a famine in the land. There was lack in the land. And the word says that Isaac sowed in the land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Wow. What? Isaac sowed and reaped in the same year. I believe in 2015 that the seeds we sow will come up in 2015. We're going to be able to see harvest like we've never seen it before. Now, here, here's one of the things the Lord put in my heart as I heard that in my spirit. That the seed is not just about you. That in 2015, it's going to be important that when the harvest and as the harvest comes in, that we sow the seed and give the harvest to the things of God. That this season is not about more comfort for us, but about really about advancing the gospel and advancing the things of God, advancing the church and using it to build and advance and preach and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. The harvest is not just about you and what you want, but the harvest is really about what is it that God wants from the harvest. The year of the seed, relinquish the seed, let go of the seed and watch God do a great and mighty thing. Also in Amos 9 and 13, the word says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows seed. So the harvest and the, the, the plowman and the reaper will be in the field at the same time. What a promise. And I believe that part of the reason for this accelerated seed and harvest time is so because of the urgency of the hour. I so believe, I so believe that Jesus is coming soon. I so believe that this is a, one of the finest hours for the church and for the body of Christ. And I believe that God is bringing in the harvest. I believe the harvest is ripe unto harvesting and that, the, that, that God is bringing in souls by the millions. And yes, even from nations who have resisted the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that now in this season, there will be a, uh, an openness to hear and receive the good news of Jesus Christ and a harvest. And so as you sow your seed, keep in mind that this is about the, the gospel, reaching nations and about people coming to know Jesus Christ. And so when, when the harvest comes in, release it for the gospel's sake, not just for more comfort. Don't build bigger barns and, and, and fat, fatting your bank accounts, but make sure that you're giving back to the things of God for the glory of God. So year of the seed, year of releasing, relinquishing the seed. Number 13 in how to make 2015 a new season, a memorable season, is relish relationships. Relationships are vital in 2015. Relish relationships. Listen, people are more valuable than things. People are eternal. Things are temporal. People are the more important part of 2015. Relish relationships, value relationships. You know, when God wants to bless you, he brings a person in your life. However, when the enemy wants to ensnare you, he also will bring people into your life. So spend time with God to know the difference, whether this is a God sent person or an enemy dispatched person in your life. But relish relationships, value the people that God has sent in your life. 
Value your mate, value your children, your, your grandchildren. You know, as I shared with you that in 2014, I, I witnessed a number of friends and loved ones pass away. And I came away with, from those seasons, from those memorials and from those moments with a greater value, a greater appreciation for my friends, my loved ones, my wife, my children, my grandchildren. Uh, I try to linger a little bit longer with, with my family. I try to spend more time, and certainly since then, trying to spend more time encouraging and being encouraged by my friends. You know, I've been blessed, I, I really have. I've been tremendously blessed by good people in my life, friends and people who've spoken into my life and encouraged me. And, and I've, I've been reminded in this season to make it a point to show and communicate my appreciation, my value for those friends, those loved ones, those family members. And so I've tried to make my relationships a priority. So relish relationships in 2015. I don't know all the reasons why that is, will be so valuable as the years go on, but I do want to encourage you to relish those relationships in 2015. Don't, don't make light of the people God has placed in your life. Value those relationships. Tell people more and more how much you love them and appreciate them. Um, and so I believe perhaps that's maybe one of those ones that are uniquely for me, but I think it's certainly valuable valuable for all of us who are in Christ Jesus. Number 14, and we're almost done. We only have 15, and I'm on number 14. Reevaluate your priorities. And certainly this follows behind the relationship factor, relishing relationships, but reevaluate your priorities. I noticed something, that the things that were pri priority in my youth are not priority in this season of my life. And so priorities do shift. And so in order to maximize 2015, it's going to be important that we take an honest assessment of what's really important in our life. Relationships becoming more important, the things of the gospel becoming more important. You know, I'm, I'm spending more and more time investing into my children. My children, in the sense of, you know, I've been privileged, I have uh, adult children. Uh, my son, by birth is, is uh, 31 years old. He's married to a wonderful young lady, uh, my daughter, Adrienne, who's a daughter by marriage, and she's in her 30s and early, maybe, I think she's 30. And uh, I have an adult daughter uh, uh, that's uh, 28 years old, and uh, she's married to a wonderful young man, and he's 29 years old. And, and, and I've been spending time with my adult children, and I have a couple of adult children that are by choice. I just choose to call them my children uh, because uh, they've been in my life for a number of years, and I value them. I've been trying to spend more time with them, investing into them, partly because I believe that it's going to be and is important to deposit into them the wisdom and the insight and the passions I have uh, in the Lord and the, in the gospel, in, the, in ministry and in life, making uh, uh, an investment into them. Um, it has become important to me uh, more and more in this season, succession. What, you know, in my youth, in my early years in ministry, succession wasn't as an important factor. I was doing everything. I was, you know, reverend somebody, you know, and all of that. But for whatever reason, I've backed away from being in the very forefront of ministry and moving my children and my adult children and the, and the spiritual children into the forefront. I'm thinking more about succession. Listen to me. In, 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 in 2015, re-evaluate the priorities of your life, investing wisely accordingly. Make the adjustments. Uh, make the shift as it is necessary. You know, and, and so it's important not to waste time and energy on, the, on things that are not a priority in your life. One of the things I'm listening to <clears throat> in my life and making an, an assessment and reevaluating and making changes accordingly is that things that are no longer passionate, things that no longer motivate me, things that I no longer have a zeal for, it may, not, it may still be an important part of my life, but it may not be the priority of my life. And so in 2015, make sure that you're investing your life in the things that are priority for this season. And so I spend more time um, preparing my family. I, I'm not saying I'm leaving here, but I believe the Lord is coming and, and there are some things that, that even in our, in, our, in our 50s, in our 60s, that are are. are are a greater priority than the things that were in my youth. I thought it was interesting. I laugh sometimes. Uh, 
that in my 20s, my car priority or my, my car preference, in my 20s and 30s, I wanted a Corvette. I talk about a Corvette. Corvette. I even have a little model Corvettes on my on my books book uh, shelves at home, and I just Corvette, Corvette. Now that I'm in my 50s and got children and grandchildren, I'm thinking SUV. You know, you know, buying a getting a new car, but having room for my grandchildren. You see, in in different seasons of your life, your priorities shift. Things become a little bit uniquely different. So be ready and be willing to readjust the priorities in your life so that you can maximize that season in your life. Last but not least, number 15, 2015, what I believe the wisdom of God for me in 2015, that he's speaking to my life, and I believe that he would share some of these, if not all of these, with those who you who are listening today. Uh, and that is number 15, reach back and bring others with you. Reach back in 2015 and bring others with you. In other words, in 2015, discipleship is a critical and urgent piece of life, a priority in life. You know, I, I look back over my life as I've made some assessments and still need to make some additional assessments of, of the contributions that others have made in my life. I have been tremendously blessed even before coming to Christ, but certainly after coming to Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, it's interesting that on May the 5th, I'll have my 36th uh, birthday in Christ, 36 years in Christ. And there have been a number of wonderful people who have who've made deposits in my life, those who've come before me. And all of us stands on the shoulders of others who've come before us. I, I, I value and greatly appreciate the countless ones who've spoken into my life, the countless ones who, who have made uh, their life mission to make it better for those of us who, who have come before us. I, as I say that, I think about a, uh, a, a gentleman that I shared an office with as I served as a school resource officer in uh, 1996 and 95. I was served at a school resource officer at West Charlotte High School. And there was a gentleman there in 1995 and 96 that I shared part of an office with. He was a, a school uh, bus driving or driver coordinator. And he was a elderly gentleman. He's probably even then he was in his 70s. And he was one of the first seven African-American police officers in Charlotte Mecklenburg. And I remember a number of occasions just talking with him and talking about his years as a police officer. Here I am many years after him as a police officer and had all of the benefits of, of a, a modern, uh, current, innovative technology police officer. And he was talking and sharing about how his years were, how he, they didn't ride in a car, they walked the beat, and how they, they would find themselves late at night to, you know, officers standing in doorways trying to stay warm. Occasionally the police sergeant would ride by in a police car and but they would be out in the cold and you know waiting because after you know stores or bars closed at night they had no place to go but standing in the doorways trying to stay warm and I here I am with with a office and my own patrol car and you know had the all of the benefits of his sacrifice. And he would talk about how, as one of the first seven black police officers in Charlotte, how he wasn't able to arrest a, a, a white person. He could only detain him until a white officer came and made the arrest. And he talked about the hardships as a young, uh, young police officer, even in those days. And I, I was so humbled by his sacrifice that I refused to take uh, um, my job for granted and the benefits that I had for granted. And so I shared that with you to encourage you to make a difference in the life of others, that you would make sacrifices. You would, even today, that you would uh, make a difference in the life of someone else, even as uh, Mr. Staley made a difference in my life and made it possible for me to have the benefits and the opportunities as a young officer, uh, police officer in Charlotte Mecklenburg, to walk out and to, and to have a, a, an impact and to have a, 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 a perhaps a quality of life and a quality of, of service as a police officer because of the sacrifices he made. Now, my question to you is, 
who's watching you? Whose life will you impact? Who are you going to bring forward? Who are you reaching back and helping and encouraging and discipling so that their days can be better because of the sacrifices that you make? So in 2015, I challenge you to disciple others. I have a couple of young men, my, not only my children and my, my sons, but also a couple of other young men that I'm purposing and investing in to help them succeed. I think about the countless ones that came before me and aided me and assisted me and they reached back and helped me in my life call, in my life journey. And my challenge to each of you who are watching is whose life are you impacting? That was one of the things the Lord reminded me of the importance of, that I would impact the life of others and that I would reach back and give back and be an encouragement and, and, and disciple others as some discipled me. Now, we've covered a number of things on how to make 2015 a memorable year, if I may go back through just the, just the, the title of each of the 15. Reach back and bring others forward. Reevaluate your priorities in 2015. Relish relationships. Relinquish the seed. Reflect upon yesterday and learn. Rest in the sovereignty of God. Rehearse what God has said. Reclaim your vision, dream, and destiny. Refuse to remain in a defeated place. I, hopefully I covered that one. I may have ran over that one. Refuse to, re to remain in a defeated place. If something's not working, move beyond it. Number six was release the old. Number five, reposition yourself as needed. And then renew your mind to your new season. And then rebuild through personal change. Reaffirm your commitment and re replenish your faith. Wisdom in how to make 2015 a memorable, limitless, all things new kind of year is before us. I pray that this wisdom will help you go forward and maximize 2015 like never before. This is Pastor Leon Threat on Wisdom for Living. God bless you, and I hope to see you in the future. Have a great day in the Lord.